how you doing? Welcome to the Disney Wonder cruise ship. I'm the legend, joined as always by Molly. And we're gonna show you all around the cruise ship in this video, from the, uh, the restaurants, the bars, the food, the staterooms, the characters, everything you might wanna see on the Disney Cruise Lines, Disney Wonder cruise ship. Starting here with the main pool, this is uh, obviously a family pool, a little bit deeper than the kids' pool, but this is also where you go for your, your big kind of uh, outdoor shows. So the sail away parties here, this is where the Pirates in the Caribbean deck party is. And it's, it's a fine pool deck. Definitely, uh, it feels like a bit of a smaller ship, but uh, not terrible. And there is three different pools, an adult pool, a kid's pool, and a family pool. We're at the family pool right now. Lots of lounge chairs up top. And I love Funnel Vision here. They show movies pretty much continuously. When they're not showing movies, like right now, they're doing trivia, which is cool because uh, it allows people doing their YouTube videos a little bit quieter time to film. But uh, we were just playing The Incredibles. They're playing Muppet Treasure Island tonight. So they have a wide variety of movies to play up here. And this is the pool deck area. Let's go show you around the rest of the ship. Also in the main pool deck area, I forgot to mention, they do have two hot tubs. One and two. And then these gazebo areas here, they occasionally do meet and greets for some of the Disney characters. Hey guys, now coming at you from the family pool area. This is obviously a, a point of chaos. The pool is not very deep, so it's good for the toddlers. They also just home to the ship's one and only water slide, the twist and spout. That is a pretty good size water slide at sea. I believe this was added in the last dry dock, so it's, it's pretty good. One problem, you do have to load in like the funnel area, so that is not a very fun time. Also, they got a couple splash pad areas for kids down here. They've got an older one themed to like Donald Duck, and there's tipping buckets and all sorts of fun stuff like that. And a smaller one themed towards Finding Nemo. But that is the Aqualab family pool area. Now I wanted to take the time to show you just what it's like to go down that twist and spout water slide. Overall, it's a really, really fun water slide. Went down about three or four times over the course of the cruise. And here's the, the view of the water slide and my oh-so-beautiful legs. Minor detail here, I really love the look of the Disney cruise ships. I think their, their color scheme it makes for a really, really pretty ship. <laughs> Greetings from the Quiet Cove, which is the adults only area up here on deck nine towards the front of the boat. Now, the, most of the ship overrun with kids, the adult area not quite so. So they do have a pool, they've got a guy playing acoustic guitar, so a couple of hot tubs, sun loungers and that kind of thing. Also, the, uh, the biggest pool bar on deck is over here, and that's Signals, with uh, four different types of draft beer, if you're a draft beer person, and a really nice liquor selection. Now, also over here is the, uh, we can't get in there because we're not concierge level, but this is where you have your concierge lounge behind those windows there. And if you're concierge, you'll also get this special sun deck as well. So definitely nice to hang out, relax, get away from the kids on the ship, and enjoy some music. On deck nine, right outside the adult pool area, is the Cove Cafe, which is a fancy, mostly a coffee kind of establishment where you get your espresso, cappuccinos, things like that. We do have some drinks in here, like expensive liquors, like Louis the Thirteenth. Doesn't get too much more expensive than that. They've, now all that stuff costs money. They do have free snacks. Orange chocolate cupcakes, Rice crispy treats. Ooh, chocolate pillow danish. Chocolate chip muffins and things like that. There's a variety of magazines and stuff like that, as well as comfy chairs. A very uh, nice, quiet place if you want to read a book or something. On deck 10 towards the front of the boat is the sports court area. We have a couple of different basketball hoops and things like that. And then uh, what I really like is over here behind windshield, you've got a uh, foosball, You've got ping pong and stuff like that. I really like that they have foosball. Pretty much every cruise ship has ping pong, but foosball is a little bit more harder to find. Also, they have a glass top on it, so uh, you can put your beer down there if you want to. And uh, solid. Uh, not a big fan of the sports court, but really, really like the foosball. Here's the atrium on the Disney Wonder cruise ship. And it's a three-story atrium. It's currently used for, uh, mostly used for meet and greets and, and stuff like that. Today, right now, it's the Princess Gathering. Now, we'll give you a heads up if you're booking this cruise and you have little girls that want to meet the princesses. These are something you need a ticket for. They're free, but you need, just need to make reservations for it to meet the princesses or the Frozen characters. Um, also, here in the atrium, they do do some live music and stuff like that. You've got Ariel's statue. And a lot of times you'll have people waiting that you like, these people I'm sure are in line to meet a character that's popping up at some point. One thing I love, my favorite detail about the atrium is this, uh, like, bronze bunting with all the various Disney characters on it. Their atrium is really, really just used for meet and greets and occasionally music, so it's not like some cruise ships where they do like shows and activities and stuff like that over here. But it's still pretty. Also, down there on deck three is where you get your uh, port adventures and your guest services desk. 
if you were to need something like that. Here's guest services on deck three, which uh, Molly wanted me to point out because she really likes the mural behind it. Right by the main family pool area is Pinocchio's Pizzeria, which is a quick service pizza place, open lots of hours of the day. I like it because they have different pizza that changes out at different times. Like today, they've got a chicken florentine, like the Hawaiian, there's a sausage. So, uh, pretty good. It's a much better pizza than you'll find at like the Disney theme parks, where some of their pizza, they're not so great. Like your, your Pizza Rizzo's, your Pizza Faris, things like that. There also is a, uh, another pool bar area over here, right next to it, with craft beer and all sorts of booze. Ice cream is exactly what you think it is. It's a couple of soft serve ice cream machines. Now they always have two that have chocolate vanilla and then the one in the middle they change up every day. And today it's got banana and blueberry. I am definitely gonna try that. Also right next door to the ice cream is Sully Sips, which is another bar and also has some sort of more smoothie options as well. Uh, great souvenirs cup. Those are uh, pretty snazzy. Now right by the Kitten Family Pool, there's Pete's Boiler Bites, which has kind of like your typical snack bar kind of food, hot dogs, chicken fingers. They do have like a burger of the day. Today's burger is a spicy chicken burger. If you come here, I like this because you could get uh, chicken fingers whenever you want. And then what's really interesting about the Boiler Bites is this window over here, where they do shawarma. Today's shawarma offerings, chicken and beef and uh, lamb. So you get the big shawarma things going there. That's pretty unique for a cruise ship. This is, the, uh, this is the only line I think that does something like this. And you've also got a tons of toppings to put on your shawarma, which is great. I'm gonna go get some chicken fingers. I love chicken fingers. They've also got some really fun toppings over here for your burgers and stuff. A chipotle mayonnaise, guacamole, healthy stuff Molly might eat, and then uh, barbecue and all that good stuff here. I just wanted two chicken fingers. Yay. On deck nine, right by the kids and family pool, is Daisy's Delights. It's a good place to go if you want to eat a little bit healthier on your Disney cruise. I don't know who, why people would want to do that, but if you did, there are salads, a really impressive selection of sandwiches. Like these uh, look really good. You got wraps, you've got cold sandwiches, you've got a whole selection of paninis and stuff up there. Fresh fruit, ooh, cookies, cookies. All right, then over here as well, you've got a build a bowl station featuring a selection of different soups and rices and then uh, toppings for the bowl. So good to have uh, some more healthy options. I think Molly's getting a panini. On deck 10 towards the front of the boat is the Bippity Boppity Boutique. And this is where you can have your little girls mainly over into princesses. Very, very, very popular in the theme parks and things like that. So it makes a lot of sense that they brought that to Cruise Line as well. Um, obviously we're traveling with no kids, so this is not something of importance to us. It's also where you can get made over into a pirate for pirate night tonight. So uh, that's fun too. Anyway, this is deck 10 uh, towards the front of the boat. In this segment here, I'm going to talk about some of the big events that will happen aboard your cruise on the Disney Wonder. And these are uh, really, really fun. There's three of them I'm going to talk about here, starting with the Mickey's Sail a Wave Party. This happens on the first day of your cruise, right after the mustard drill. Everyone goes up to the top deck, and they put on a wonderful show starring your cruise director staff, some of the entertainment team, guests that are dressed up in Disney bounding, and of course the uh, Mickey and Minnie and those characters. This show's a lot of fun, and my favorite part is when they count down and they blow the Mickey whistle, and then boom! You are officially on vacation. The next major event is the Pirates in the Caribbean deck party. This happens one night on your cruise will be dedicated as Pirate Night. Many of the guests will dress up in pirate garb. You'll have pirate bandanas delivered to your stateroom. And then in the evening, you'll go up to the top deck and there'll be a wonderful stage show with Mickey and Minnie and Goofy. Mickey will come in on a zip line. Pirates will rappel off the funnels. And then it culminates with fireworks at sea. Which is really cool. Obviously, this is not the same scale of fireworks you'll see in the parks, but having fireworks on a cruise ship is really, really wonderful. The final event of the cruise is the Till We Meet Again. This is done in the atrium, and this is sort of like your, your kiss goodnight, your grand finale of the cruise. Uh, Mickey and Minnie and the guys, the princesses, some of the people that were in those wonderful stage shows, they all come out. They'll do a big meet and greet ceremony where if you didn't get that picture you wanted, you'll have a chance to do that. Also, it's a cool opportunity to talk to some of the people that have been in these stage shows. And then uh, they'll gather around the stairs for a one little wave goodbye and song. And that's a really nice way to end your Disney cruise. Now, here's some of my favorite moments from those shows. All right, Disney Wonder, it's time to get real and take it up.
Lloyd's your Disney Cruise vacation. That means it's time to sound the ship's horn. Count down from five. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> It's high time you learn that a bloodthirsty crew really celebrates righteous ones. was the Buena Vista Theater, which they, where they show their first run movies, some in 3D, some in regular D. And uh, on our cruise, it's uh, we're shooting in February of uh, 2019. We got Wreck -It Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2. We've got uh, Mary Poppins Returns, Incredibles 2, and we've got, what else? Nutcracker. Nutcracker in the Foreign Realms. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some of those. Wanted to show this off while there was nobody in here, but uh, a very big movie theater for, uh, for a cruise ship. And you get in on deck five. In this next segment here, we're going to focus on the dinner time on the Disney Wonder. And if you've never been on a Disney Cruise Line before, they use what's called a rotational dining program. The ship has three different main dining rooms for dinner. There's Animator's Palette, Tiana's Place, and Triton's. And each night, you move from one restaurant to the other. So on night one, you might have dinner at Animator's Palette. Night two, you might have dinner at Tiana's Place. And in night three, you might have dinner at Triton's. And when you move from restaurant to restaurant, the waitstaff moves with you. So you get to have the same waiters and waitstaff every night of your cruise. I really like this. So let's go take a look at the restaurants and most importantly the food <laughs> so for night one of the cruise we're here at animators palette for dinner which is a, a restaurant that's on all the disney cruise ships a little bit different on each one imagine this one on the uh the wonder that we're on it changes from like uh, black and white to color later in the evening the menu is really cool and let's just check out what is on this menu for the evening all right you got some specialty cocktails up there under appetizers, you've got uh, sliced ham, pasta persettis, moving on to soups, butternut squash, baked potato, you got some salads, bread service is going to be uh, garlic herb and focaccia. Moving on, uh, there's the cocktails again, and my menu has just appetizers on it. So I'm going to steal Molly's and be back to you in a minute. Alright, that one looks better. Main courses, pinet, bolognese, grilled tuna steak, we got a chicken breast, a pork chop, and a uh, ginger teriyaki dusted Angus beef sirloin. A couple of uh, other ones if you have a... Now these I think are on the menus like every night if you want simpler fare. Also some uh, vegetarian options as well. Not quite sure what I'm going to go with yet. Here's tonight's bread service. You got two different types of bread. Now, one thing I love about Animator's Palette is the butter knife is uh, made to look like a little paintbrush. I know for us, sometimes they sold these in the stores, so we actually have one of these at our home. We were in the dream in like 2012 or 2013, and they sold these in the stores. Don't know if they do or not, but they are really, really cool. Also, really cool centerpieces here. And now it's time to eat some bread. 
For our appetizer round, we both went with the pasta prosettis, which uh, we, we, the animator's palette menu, it's on all the ships and it's pretty similar. So we've had these before and these are very, very tasty. So on Disney, like all of the cruise lines, you can order pretty much as many appetizers or entrees as you want. And uh, especially with the appetizers, I don't really feel guilty because normally they're tiny. So I also got the ham. So the dinners on Disney Cruise Line, they're four course meals. So you get an appetizer, of course, then your choice of super salad. Molly went with the butternut squash and I went with the baked potato and bacon soup. Molly went with the steak. That seems to be a, a quite the healthy portion of steak. I went with the uh, the Parmesan crusted pork chop. I, I, I don't really think Disney does pork really well, so that's why I went with this. And it looks good. Both look good. It smells really good. It is time for dessert. On the left side is going to be all your drinks, so coffee, especially cocktails, and your uh, main desserts for the evening: a crunchy walnut cake, chocolate fudge cheesecake, cookies and cream sundae. Warm, sticky date pudding. That sounds terrible. And the special dessert, a lemon icebox pie. Dessert time, Molly got the cookies and cream sundae, as well as the walnut cake, and I got the uh, the chocolate cheesecake. Had I known the chocolate cheesecake was tiny, I probably would have ordered a second dessert. So with my cheesecake being really tiny, I decided to also double up on desserts and got the, uh, the lemon pie. So now it's time to talk about some of the show and theming elements here at Animator's Palette. And this is where the restaurant really, really excels. When you first enter, everything is very much in black and white, uh, from the colors on the wall to the ceiling to the, the palettes on the ceiling, in addition to the big screens filled with the, the Disney characters. Now, as the courses come out and dinner goes on, these characters start to come alive. The characters, they begin as uh, pencil sketch drawings, like an animator drawing them, just like you would see in a drawing class. And then slowly but surely, these pencil sketch drawings, well, they start to come to life. Like here is Haiti smoking a cigar. That's something you don't see every day. Pretty cool animation there. And then a little bit later on after that, they start to get colored in and they, the, the restaurant starts to get a little bit more colorful. The characters get more life. And then after everything's colored in, right around when dessert hits, well, it's time for a show. And they, they show this wonderful montage of Disney clips from everything from the newest movies to the oldest movies, from happy moments, sad moments, adventure moments, romantic moments. Well, then towards the end of the clips, guess who shows up but none other than Sorcerer Mickey Mouse, who comes out to the music from Fantasmic, like the, the finale music of Fantasmic, and he dances around, the restaurant lights up. It is an absolutely wonderful moment. The, the montage of clips is great, and then Mickey coming out really puts the cherry on top. Uh, if you're a Disney fan, you are going to absolutely love this part of Animator's Palette. Also, man, we got a great table. Like, Mickey was right there, right next to us. Check that out. Anyway, this is a uh, you can't miss this on the Disney Wonder cruise ship. If you do decide to do Palo, the upcharge dining restaurant, I would not do it on the night that it's Animator's Palette because it's just too much fun. Time for dinner on night two, and we are in Tiana's place, the New Orleans Princess and the Frog themed restaurant. Let's take you through the menu, see what this looks like today. Under appetizer, boudin sausage fritters. You got a charcuterie board, shrimp and carrots. Uh, I tuna tartare, pepper pot, tomato soup, vegetarian stuff that I'll pass right over. Under entrees, you've got a pasta, a sea bass, a chicken, a pork tenderloin, Big Daddy's roasted prime rib of beef. Bread service is a per brioche, and some other stuff too. I'm excited for this one. So in Tiana's place, there's also a very special drink menu. And I think we're going to try a couple of these. There's no way I'm going to pass up the Bayou experience, a three rum pour tasting flight. And then they got special beers too on draft. They got a Beta Purple Haze. I love that beer. Fun fact, once bought a Beta Purple Haze for none other than uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. But one thing I'm bummed about, no hurricanes, no hand grenades under the cocktail list. That is a uh, disappointment. We've been doing it on September too. So here's what the bread service looks like tonight. Very different, kind of like a big pumpkin or football kind of thing. Onion dip, and we got some beets. Just like Mardi Gras, without all the uh, scandalousness. <laughs> Satsuma. 
Salad, so I went with two different appetizers. So I got the charcuterie board, and Molly went with the seafood pepper pot. Here's a look at what the uh, prime rib looks like. Got some gravy put on there. Comes with a twice baked potato, which is awesome. And Molly's chicken looks amazing. And what's your serve with like a muffin? Uh, pecan uh, pudding. Pecan pudding. Bread pudding. It is dessert time here at Tiana's Place, and I, I know where I want to go. As a, a guy that's been to New Orleans, loves New Orleans, loves uh, Cafe Du Monde, so I'm going to go buttermilk beignets. But there's also uh, chocolate, gâteau, bread pudding, banana fosters, a pecan nut tart. But I'm going to go where it's at, the buttermilk beignets. So we're going to share three desserts between the two of us. Beignets, the bread pudding, and the delightful chocolate cake. Also, the plates here, amazing. Time to talk about the show in Tiana's Place, and it's a lot of fun. It's all themed around the Princess and the Frog movie. Obviously, the restaurant is the restaurant from the film, or Tiana's dream restaurant. And it greets you, welcomes you to dinner, and then she'll sing songs. And there's also a wonderful three-piece band, the Crawfish Crooners. And the band will play all throughout dinner. They'll play some Princess and the Frog songs, some Disney songs, some New Orleans songs. And it's a lot of fun. It's, I love having that entertainment aspect to the meal. And then at the end of the meal, there's a big, giant Mardi Gras celebration parade where Tiana's leading the parade, and all the waiters are dressed up with beads, and they everyone's invited to get up and join the parade and march around the restaurant. It's a real lot of fun. I would say I like an animator's palette a little bit better, but the show here is a lot of fun and very good. Also, while you're eating, Tiana wanders around and takes pictures and meet and greets with guests. All right, night three of the cruise. It's Triton's, the, uh, the least themed environment of all of them. With a, a loose little mermaid theme. This is also the restaurant where they'll have like the brunch in or the welcome aboard, sit down lunch and things like that. Let's take a look at that menu. All right, for appetizers, duck confit. You got a jumbo shrimp, an escargot, and a breaded and deep fried brie. Soups and salads, there's a potato and leek, a French onion, a couple of salads. Makes sense, warm French country bread for the bread selection. Take a look at these main courses here. Congeli pasta, a salmon, a duck, a rack of lamb, and Chateaubriand, which is one of my favorite meals in the world, so I cannot wait for that. Here's what the bread service looks like. You got a couple different little French breads, and then an olive dip right there. Yeah, there you go. So we're getting double rounds of appetizers. I got a duck confit to start off with, and Molly got escargot, so Molly will get no kisses until she brushes her teeth. Snails, yuck. Breadstick looks good. Snails, yuck. For appetizer two, we both got the, uh, the deep fried brie. It is soup course time. I went with the French onion. Molly went with the potato and leek. Main courses look good tonight, guys. I got Chateaubriand. Looks just amazing. And then uh, Molly got lamb. There's a giant piece of lamb on the left there. All right, time to eat. Time for dessert here at Triton's. And a solid dessert menu. Grand Marnier souffle, an apple tart. You got a creme brulee, a shortcake, and a classic opera chateau. All right, dessert looks fantastic. A couple of Grand Marnier souffles. Now, unfortunately, Triton's, unlike the other restaurants on board the Disney Wonder, does not feature any sort of character or show or music. It's just kind of your, a basic cruise experience. 
There is a cool mosaic mural of the Little Mermaid and the characters from that film. There's also some Sebastian lamps, but uh, it doesn't feature the same Disney magic as the other restaurants on board that had that show element. On deck nine is Senses Spa and Salon. There's also a fitness center over here. Now, with being only on a three-day cruise, I am not going to go to the gym and stuff like that. But it is an option for you if you're a spa person. They do tons of different treatments, uh, all upcharge stuff. But if you're a spa person, they, they'll get you covered. Also, I've heard good things about like the rainforest room and things like that. If you're a big spa people. Let's take a minute to talk about the kids clubs here on the Disney Wonder. I'm starting out in the Oceaneer Club, which is the coolest one. You've got a uh, big screen thing over here next to some books, but this is where you have some wildly themed environments to Marvel, Toy Story, Disney Junior, and Frozen. Gonna take a look at the Frozen one first. This is uh, themed after Wandering Oaken's trading post from the film. And it's a really cool little themed space. Uh, very much feels like the, uh, the queue. If you've ever been on the Frozen ride at Epcot, Definitely kind of gives me that vibe going on in here. The sauna and all sorts of stuff and, you know, little touches from the film and things like that. Obviously, like, Norwegian-type food, loot fish. And some games and stuff like that. I imagine they probably do, like, Anne and Elsa Arts and Crafts, I would guess, uh, in here. I do like the sauna effect. Very, very neat. Moving across to what is my favorite area of the of the Oceaneer Club, and it's the Marvel Superhero Academy. I'm a big fan of the uh, the Marvel superhero films, so this section obviously it, it kind of appeals to me a little bit more than some of the other ones. Got it. definitely feels like something out of the movies, kind of. You got some of the different uh, props over here, not not screen used stuff, but uh, like Falcon's jetpack, Captain America's classic shield, Iron Man's helmet. We've got Black Widow's gauntlets. What what are gauntlets? Spidey's web shooters and uh, Ant-Man's helmet. And being a big uh, dork and fan of the theme parks, I, I definitely like this little area over here. It shows you off some of like the fictional curriculums that you would take with like Teamwork 101 by Steve Rogers. Uh, wall crawling as part of physical education with Spider-Man and stuff like that. But what I love is over here is uh, it's a nod to the the Iron Man Experience attraction over in Hong Kong Disneyland. That's the uh, the ride vehicle you go on in. But do like this as well. Also, a Daily Bugle talking about how the Superhero Academy is open, and of course they have to throw in their Spider-Man mentor or menace. So I thought that was really cool. Got uh, another screen over here. Earlier in the, the a couple minutes ago it was like had a flashing logo like right where we were, so I'm wondering if that sort of stays with you the entire ship when they're not doing an activity. Now one thing that puzzled me, uh, I'm sure in the comment section you might be able to correct me on this, but I have no idea what this thing is here. It uh, doesn't come across as a nod to any of the movies. I imagine it's probably something to do with their kids clubs and an activity they do, but it didn't strike me as anything from the Marvel films. I've seen them all multiple times now. Also like this as well, they're, uh, they're lockers, and each one is for a uh, different member of the Avengers team. I don't know if these are lockers. The kids put their stuff in. They got activities and things like that in there. Maybe activities. Probably activities, but it's it's still cool. Now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to show you a lot of the Disney Junior one as they are doing a uh, a lion guard activity. But this is that. Room. Finishing it off with uh, the most impressive room in the area, and that is the Andy's Andy's room from the Toy Story films. The only two-story space in this area, and of course, uh, it's really, really neat. Home to the big slinky dog slide. You've got ham and all sorts of stuff. Very much feels like you're in the uh, the room from the films, and uh, a very cool space. Anyway, that's the Oceaneer Club. Let's go check out the Oceaneer Lab. Love the view from the top up here too, with the bed sheets and. Uh, when the slide is closed, they just move to like Slinky Dog's butt over there. All right, now let's actually go to the Oceaneer Lab. This kid's club's the Oceaneer Lab, which is like an arts and crafts section. And uh, it seems neat. It's not as cool as the other one, but uh, if your kid's more artsy and that kind of thing, you might, might have fun in here. One thing I like about it, it ties into a lot of other Disney storylines, as it's based around this Mary Oceaneer character, who's a member of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, which ties into, you know, uh, Hong Kong Disneyland and Tokyo Disneyland. You got the Tower of Terror over there, Mystic Manor over here. They got lots of things for the kids to do. There's a coloring desks in here and stuff like that. Tracing, yeah. iPad games and things like that. And then uh, the Disney dork in me loves that they have like concept art of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride on the walls and things like that. 
Very neat. Now, if you are an adult like like us, you can come into the kids clubs on the first day. That's how we're in here. Is um, and they do an open house on the first day, so you get to come in and check them all out. Move around a little bit. You got another craft studio here. The giant map on the wall. Looks like you could paint your own, like color in your own Mickey hand, and then wear it. I would assume. And they have these big, giant uh, paper things. They can just uh, let the kids doodle on. Big jumbotron over here for character meet and greets and games and that kind of stuff. Also over here they have like these big uh, ocean simulator kind of things. So if you want to feel what it's like to drive a cruise ship, you can feel what it's like to drive a cruise ship. Alrighty, let's move on to the other side. Not too much on the other side. Um, this is mostly like giant arts and crafts tables. And uh, nothing too interesting over here. Do have some nods to some of the other pirate type films like uh, Peter Pan and stuff like that on the walls. But lots of big tables set up for activities in here. And then lots of little details and stuff like that. Now I'm coming at you by the pool deck for Edge. Edge is the, uh, the tween club, so you're 11 to 14, the kids go in here. And it's not one of the bigger spaces on the ship, like the other kids clubs are gigantic. This one is definitely not that. But it does have some cool features. It's got a cool uh, like under the sea submarine kind of aesthetic. Some very big TV screens. And uh, down here you have some porthole type things with a very much a Finding Nemo kind of a feel. And that kind of stuff. But it's kind of neat. Not my favorite uh, kids area on the ship, but not, not terrible. As a guy that grew up in New York and uh, been to many of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, love that they have a Mickey's balloon from a very old Mickey's balloon on the wall here in the club. The final kids club is Vibe. This is the teen club. It actually exists in one of the funnels, which is kind of cool. You get some weird funky art, a fake elevator, which is a, uh, that's neat. I'm assuming it's a fake elevator. And then this is in one of the funnels, which towards the very top. Why would it be a fake elevator? Because I don't think there's an elevator down there. Yeah, I guess probably not. Yeah, see? Oh, I just hit the button, so maybe it is. No, it's probably a fake elevator. <laughs> All right, anyway, showing off the space a little bit more. Oh, they got kind of a juice bar thing. Some funky kind of props and Mickey Mouse stuff on the walls. Got an interesting cat display over here showing off like Mickey Mouse Club memorabilia. Which is what all the teens want, I guess. That's not at all. But an interesting place. Some cool couches and that kind of thing. I not a fake elevator. Huh? Oh, is it actually a real elevator? Yeah, it's a real elevator, of course. Yeah, huh? people it is a it real after. elevator. I was wrong. Alrighty. And there, there's another oh small God. room over here with Guitar oh, Hero in it. <laughs> and a couple of chairs. Alrighty. And the other thing that I really like, um, again, it's, you know, there's an open house right when you get on board the boat for the first few hours. And uh, they have a couple of arcade games on free play, so you can hang out play Gallagher and Donkey Kong, things like that. If you've got very, very, very little ones, they do have the It's a Small World Nursery, where you come and drop off like infants. Uh, three or younger. Three or younger over here. One thing to note about the Small World Nursery is that this is an upcharge. This is not free like the other kids clubs are free. This one is not. So if you've got little ones and you want to dump them off for a dinner, you can do it, but it's going to cost you some cash. On deck 10 in the back of the boat is Palo. This is an adults-only upcharge restaurant. I believe it's the cost of getting really high up there. It's about $40 to eat in Palo now. And uh, they're open for brunch on sea days as well as dinner every night of your cruise. It's, uh, it's one of the best meals I've had in my life, but uh, I'm not sure if I would pay extra for it. Especially at the rate they're charging now when the, uh, the dining room food is so, so good. It's nice. I definitely liked it better on the Dream than I did on the Magic. But, uh give you a look over here for the, what that 40 bucks will get you is uh, various menu options I mean it's really really nice just a little bit pricey now but if you want like a, a special occasion kind of thing this would be a good idea so one thing I love about Disney Cruise Line they do free room service uh, almost I think it's almost 24 hours a day or it's like um, in the afternoons evenings and late night and then they have a different like uh, hangers to get a continental breakfast. But here's what is on the room service menu. Salads, a couple of soups, mac and cheese, chicken tenders, hot dogs, hamburgers, buffalo chicken wings, pizza. You got a steak panini, a tomato panini, BLT, grilled cheese. Don't order the grilled cheese. It was not very good. 
some desserts, key lime pie cookie, oatmeal raisin cookie, and then there's uh, the right side is all additional cost items. We just ordered a big room service order. Let's show what we got. Mike got the uh, the tomato and uh, what kind of cheese is that? Panini? Mozzarella. Mozzarella panini. Got some uh, chicken tenders that smell amazing. And then we reveal what's under door number two. My favorite item from room service is buffalo chicken wings. And then there's some more items, items on the room service menu that they don't tell you about. Like the famous Mickey premium bar. Like this is the kind of thing like it costs you like six bucks in the theme parks. They do have it at room service. They have it at any of the dining areas. If you want to order like in your dining room, you don't like the menu, you want a Mickey bar, you can order it. I ordered it from room service. So now I'm going to enjoy some wings and tenders and Mickey bar. Probably not Molly's panini. Probably some of that beer. Up next on the tour, the Wonder is one of my favorite sections of the ship. It's the After Hours Adult Area. This is where uh, three different bars, and it's also uh, after a certain hour, they don't let kids in. And it's got kind of a cool vibe as you go in here. Three different bars. There's the Azure Nightclub and Game Show Area, uh, the Catalonic Lounge, which is like their piano bar, and the Crown and Finn Pub, which is a lovely pub. Also, one cool thing about this area is they have these great giant windows, um, which you could take some wonderful pictures of. Nice padded seats, and you could hang out there and read a book or just get some fancy Instagram photos. Let's take a minute to talk about what might be my favorite place on the entire ship, and that is the Crown and Finn, a pop, proper English pub here in the adult area. Now, this is an adults only area after I think 8 or 9 p.m. until that, kids can come in here. Great phone booth with an old English telephone uh, kind of place. Also, the bumper stickers, it's like Disney Wonder bumper stickers. For crowning. Mr. Butler, all right. Yep. As Molly's busy getting us a beer, this is the best place on the ship to get some draft beer. You've got Guinness, Powder Monkey. This right there, that's Crown and Finn. That's their own brew. It's a specialty pale ale made just for uh, the Disney Cruise Line, of course, Bud Light. And then if I scooch over, I'll show you some of the back taps. Kentucky Bourbon Ale, Newcastle, Blue Moon, Heineken, Angry Orchard. you got a Loose Cannon and a Cronenberg. And their beer prices are not too bad. I recommend buying this beer mug, then you can refill it, and I believe it's a 22 ounce beer for the price of a normal 16, and you get to keep it. Also, you get to trade it in for a token, so then you don't have to lug this thing around. Like, if we finish this beer here, we just trade it in, get a token, put it in my wallet, and move on. But the beer prices are actually not too absurd for a cruise line. You want a, a big Bud Light? Six bucks. <coughs> a big, nicer beer? Seven bucks. This one, like a Kentucky Bourbon Ale, that's 8.50. But their, their beer choice as well. Their cocktail list, not quite as grand for their wine list, but they, they do have a lot of whiskeys too. Like if you're a whiskey drinker, you are gonna be in luck over here. I mean, this is a, a lot, a lot of whiskeys. 
and fancy stuff too. Like they, they do not. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Disney Cruise Line. It's a higher brand cruise line, so you got a Macallan tasting flight and all sorts of ridiculous stuff you could do. You know, lots of higher price stuff. But anyway, really love this spot. So gotta gotta turn the camera back on. First of all, they have like free pub snacks too from an off hours. Like these buffalo chicken pretzel crisps that are amazing. They're like one of my favorite snack chips when I went to like Walmart or something to buy them. So love that they have those. And also they don't have like normal like paper beverage napkins. It's like a cloth towel. Like it's so fancy. Azure, which is just a weird name. I, I don't know if there's a Disney reference there or not, is the ship's main nightclub. Also where they do a lot of game shows and things like that. So this is where they did like newlywed games and they do bingo in here. What else have we seen? We Karaoke was in here. The adult karaoke. Adult karaoke was in here. And it's okay. nice, kind of kind of a basic environment. We haven't been in here when it was like party time. They're doing a silent DJ party tonight, so I'm excited for that. But a kind of a basic space. Like this feels like it could kind of be on any cruise ship anywhere. Like it doesn't scream Disney to me. And I don't know what this thing is. That's uh, a little weird. Anyway, that's uh, Azur. Also, the, the lady they've had hosting the game show, she's been fantastic. Like, she was like born to do this on a Disney ship. She's been really, really wonderful. And you can't see them, but they do have some draft beer. So if you're a draft beer drinker using that beer mug, they've got a couple different choices for you. The third lounge is the Cadillac Lounge, which I love this. They have a gas, like an old timey gas pump that tells you what's going on in here. But uh, this is your most highly themed bar out of all of them. Theme towards like old Cadillac cars. It feels like something that would take place in like a uh, very much fit in with Cars Land. Now this is your piano bar kind of place. I love the, the bar which is designed as sort of like a giant car front. Like how cool is that? Now this is more of your uh, I would say classy upscale piano bar as opposed to like your carnival like singing drunken fest. It's very very nice. They do have some draft beer in here. A lot of classic cocktails. But uh, I, I love the theming elements. Like the way it's themed is really really nice. Also love the chairs. Chairs are really comfortable in here. And they got a piano guy. Greetings from the Promenade Lounge, which is on deck three. And this is an area they do a whole bunch of different stuff. They'll have trivias in here. They'll have animation classes where you can learn to draw a Disney character in here. Um, the music in here as well. Origami. There's origami, crafts. There's also a, a large bar, tons of liquor. Only three draft beer selections. They've got a specialty drink that's like $20. We're gonna try in a couple minutes. But there is some cool stuff in here. There's also, they got like this gin cart. Uh, gin is kind of their specialty. So they have this whole cart of gin that they wheel around, I guess, during some hours. That looks awesome. And if you're like a drunk Disney dad, this is the best place on the ship because they have an area in which you can sit there and drink in the lounge. And right next door is like a soft play area for the kids that shows like Disney Junior shows so that they could uh, they could sit there and jump around and you could have your beer or your martini or whatever it is. So uh, big ups to the Promenade Lounge. Let's look, check out that cocktail. Excellent. Come on down, grab yourself a piece of paper and a pencil. Even though we have less people here, we are still playing for these covenant Mickey medallions. We do have four of them, so many of them all are way you're playing, right? You're playing. Well, Dick Four is the D Lounge. This is kind of like where they have their family game shows. They're getting ready to show uh, who wants to be a Mouseketeer. If you have little kids and stuff like that, this is going to be a space you want to spend a lot of time. Uh, we saw a pirate one the other day. It was fun. Kind of very much if you think of like a, like the, the Double Dare type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, they do some fair karaoke in here, family nightclub kind of thing. So uh, interesting place. If you have kids, you'll probably spend a decent amount of time in the D Lounge. On deck four, there is a large uh, outdoor walking path. I believe there's a smoking section out here as well on one of these sides. And this is also where you would have probably your mustard drill. Unfortunately, it's one of those outside mustard drills. Our mustard drill was like outside in the heat and it was pretty miserable, but it went pretty quickly. So I give them credit for that. But if you want to go and get some, uh, some fresh air when you're on the boat, walk around. There's also a shuffleboard over there. Come up here on deck four. We're at uh, Castaway Key, the private island day. Guys, right now we're coming at you from the Walt Disney Theater. The, uh, the big Broadway style show theater on the ship is where all the big shows happen. And I, I quite enjoyed it. This was, we just finished up our third show of the cruise and uh, there were three different shows. There was the Golden Mickeys, which is a uh, like a faux award ceremony with a whole bunch of different Disney characters. Uh, the second night was Disney's Frozen show, which was amazing, obviously just uh, based on the movie. And then tonight was Disney Dreams, kind of a princess heavy, uh, another mashup kind of Disney show. Uh, Molly, what were your favorites? 
I cried at dreams. Molly cried at dreams. All right. Frozen. Yeah. I, I Frozen was really well done. Yeah, and it, Frozen had the major like all the new technology too with projection mapping and all, all sorts of stuff and snow and lasers. It was really really cool. I enjoyed the show tonight because uh, it had like old school '90s puppets. Yeah. Uh, a, a bunch of different characters that I really liked the show on the first night as well. So um, that's really what makes Disney Cruise Line a little bit of a step above is the the show quality. So I would not miss any of these shows, uh, but Frozen was by far my favorite. The, uh, but get here early. Yes. Because it's a small theater. And yeah. It fills up, and if you have a big party, you yeah. won't sit together if you uh, yeah, show you, up like 10 minutes early. Yeah, if you have a big party, definitely get here a half hour early. If you have a smaller group, probably uh, 15 minutes. More than that if you want to get a good seat. Um, definitely would wish. I, I still I, I want to see some Marvel and Star Wars in these shows. Like they've owned those brands for years, so like Mickey showed up for no reason. Why can't you know Spider Man show up for no Mickey reason? Mickey owns the company. Yeah, but he's not in movies. Spider Man's in movies. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> they made like 18 Iron Man movies now. He could have popped up. Um, but it, the shows are fantastic. You can't miss them. One thing you will notice with the Magic being an older ship is that some parts of the ship are very small. Like the stairways, this wonderful stairway that goes up to the bibbidi boppity boutique And uh, these stairways that go all the way down, they're very small. Also the elevators, unless you're in the, the ones by the main atrium, they're very, very small. Like they can comfortably fit probably five adults depending on size. So some stuff is definitely uh, hinders you when you get the, uh, the old ships like this. Deck 4 is home to shutters, and this is where you would go if you wanted to buy those pictures you took on the cruise. I'm sure there's all sorts of various packages and things like that. I don't really do like fancy pictures on the cruise ships. We'll take a couple with the cell phone. That'll be about it. But if you had like a big family you're doing once in a lifetime or some special occasion, if you wanted to buy your pictures, that's where you come and do it. You just tap your uh, your key card right there, and it'll bring up all your pictures, which is really pretty cool. Some of the cruise lines, like it's just giant walls of photos. You have to go and try and find yourself. But this with these books, with the way of these computers, it's pretty neat. Time to talk about shopping on board the Disney Wonder, and there's two main shops. There's Mickey's Main Sale and White Cops. Now, White Caps is sort of the more adult store. We're gonna take you through that one first. And uh, they've got a lot of really, really good merchandise in here. Um, starting with Dooney and Burke bags. That's a, that's a Molly thing, that's not a me thing. Uh, purple is uh, the hot topic here at the Disney parks and resorts and things like that, so they got plenty of purple stuff. Spirit jerseys as well. Also, where they have a I lot think of your. It's called Potion Purple. Potion Purple, okay. Also, this is important. This is where they have a lot of your toiletry stuff. So, if you got, forgot sunblock or might need some medicine or uh, things like that, diaper stuff, it's all over here. Sunglasses, lots of expensive perfumes. Uh, yeah, a shocking amount of expensive perfumes. Not my kind of thing, but they do have all of your fancy. This is where you get your fancy stuff, like you see on like a normal cruise line. So, you, your upscale watches as well as jewelry, but we're not nearly as interested in that as the, the more Disney type stuff. Now, if you loved your uh, your experience here in the, in the bathroom, so on the Disney Wonder, you could bring home all sorts of larger size uh, uh, conditioners and shampoos, and they do have pretty nice stuff but as far as that stuff goes. Now, this, uh, this merchandise may be very different when you go on your cruise, but I'm just showing you what it is like on ours here in February 2019. Backpacks and nautical boat shirts golf balls it's kind of cool it's a like a, a moscow mule kind of mug disney cruise line water bottles more shirts do you like this um these things over here are kind of cool they have a show that they do called the golden mickeys and if you wanted to spend forty dollars you could take home your own golden mickey statue also if you really like the atrium statue of ariel you could, uh, you could take home a statue like that. Or your own ship. Or your own ship. They've also got one down here of like, uh, like Sailor Mickey getting kissed, things like that, and some normal stuff you see in the parks and resorts back, back in Orlando. All right, Molly, uh, fancy lady purses? They sold out really fast whenever they came out, huh? in Disney World at least. You got more Dooney and Burke, uh, nautical themed, 
purses and lady wear. <laughs> now, Molly, how much do you think something like that is? <laughs> oh, don't even want to know. Well, I mean, we got we got to tell the people if there's a price tag. Up, there is no price tag. There's a price tag on the the hand. small one. Not... Small one, two hundred bucks. Ah, yes, two hundred dollars. Uh, more spirit jerseys, a pockety shirt. You got some dad hats, all sorts of stuff. Socks. If you forgot socks, you could buy some Mickey socks. Like kind of this, like this kind of shirt where it's like it's very very subtly Disney. Like unless somebody was really really staring at it, in at you, you would not know that's a Disney shirt. Got a Turvis style tumbler. There, there's no shortage of merchandise. There's only like two main shops, and then uh, a couple of shops for uh, more adults and more kids that are much 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 smaller. Oh man, a travel blanket that looks very comfy. Look at these mugs. That's a big thing in the, like the Disney parks is like the coffee mugs, and they don't have a ton on the cruise ship, but uh, the one model they do have pretty fancy. I like how they have their own wonder shirt. Yeah, that, that's true too. All right, if you uh, packed one too few boxer shorts, don't worry, Disney's got you covered for the little price of uh, twenty-two dollars. Sleep pants. Those sleep pants look awesome. Uh, some cool like barware stuff over here. That a Disney Cruise Line bottle opener or fancy magnet? Not magnet. Uh, that's a ornament. Fancy pens as well. All right, okay, there's a different type of coffee mug over here. We've got like a Turvis wine glasses, either stemless or with stem. You've got the Disney Cruise Line Yeti. A, a shirt, that is the shirt I actually wore on Embarkation Day. I own that shirt. Very, very cool. I, I like the bag, like the beach bag's very nice yeah, too. Yeah, the beach bag is very, it's not $40, the, but. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, I mean, it's not as bad as some of like, the little lady purses. Um, that was Kate Spade. That was Kate. I'm sorry, no, no, guys. No, no, that was Junior Burke. Sorry, everybody. But we did look at a Kate Spade, too. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, go check out the kids' stuff. That's probably more affordable. Gonna walk you through the other shop now. This is Mickey's Main Sale. This is more your 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 child friendly store. So you've got a lot of pirate stuff, a lot more stuff that you would see like in the parks. Like, a lot of the stuff I've seen before. That doesn't mean it's not a very cool. I mean they've got some great stuff like Buzz Lightyear as a bubble wand or Wreck It Ralph. Uh, this I love the uh, Infinity Gauntlet coffee mug. But they got a lot of stuff that's specific to Cruise Line as well. So you got a whole bunch of plush. Plush is very very popular. And from your specific cruise line stuff like the Pillow Mickey, Admiral Mickey, Admiral Duffy, you've got Cruise Line Donald over here. I never see who you eat. Yeah, you Dewey and Louie from DuckTales. And you have some just more generic merchandise like your Star Wars section over here. The sunglasses, if you've got to pack them. Lots of uh, people buy pictures on the cruise line, and they've got some really, really cool uh, picture frames for you if you want to memorize a trip like that. There's a couple I really like. Like I love the one that looks like portholes and the, the one that also looks like a porthole. We've got a couple uh, different t-shirts and merchandise items over here celebrating 20 years of Disney Cruise Line as that is I guess the milestone that we're on right now. Yeah, 1999. Yeah, 1999. Or was it 98? I'm not even sure what it was. 99 when we were first. 98, yeah, yeah. It was 98 for the magic, mm -hmm. uh, 99 for the wonder. These I like. I like them. Molly does not like them. They're plastic plates. They're like $13. We also got some like uh, pint glasses with the Disney Cruise Line logo on it. A, a lot more dinner stuff over here. Kitchen towels and bowls and all that kind of stuff. This is awesome. Check out the salt and pepper set. That is very, very cool. All right, let's see. We got backpacks. If your kids need more treats, there are more treats over here. You got a couple different types of t-shirts. Or a little kid's swear. I do like this. Like, that's a, a very nice service. That is. Or a metal one. If you're a pin trader, they do have like Disney Cruise Line specific pins you could get over here as well. Let's go this way. <laughs> Moving along to something I try and get on every single uh, cruise I go on, and that is a cruise ship tile ornament. And they have a whole bunch of way, way more ornaments on Disney Cruise Line. 
than they do on most other cruise lines, as this entire section is dedicated to ornaments. If you're curious about the one we bought, we bought that one. Yeah, I really like this one. I know, this one's really cool. It's a ship in a bottle. Oop, yeah. oop, oop. Now, I can't tell, is that specifically the Wonder or is it just Disney Cruise Line? Um, it says fantasy. It says fantasy. All right. But uh, the one we did buy, the, the ship specific one does say Wonder on it. We have a Christmas tree at home that we put up every year and then like the lower rung, one of our smaller trees always puts those things. Now, one thing I love that they sell here, probably my favorite piece of merchandise, something I have in my house. They have the, uh, these guys from Animator's Palette, the butter knives that look like little paint brushes. They're 10 bucks, which is not too bad for something like that. And they have tons of them, which makes sense. I'm surprised they don't mention like in the restaurant or like the brochure, like on a table tent or something like we sell these. So I feel like they make a lot of money, but I feel like most people also go in the shops as well. Yeah. All right, rounding out the merchandise stuff. You got see you real soon tabs. A statue of Sailor Mickey and Sailor Minnie. There is no shortage of merchandise. A lot of Mickey stuff kind of with the, the vibe of the new shorts as well. Now here's a t-shirt. I actually I really like this. But living in Orlando, I really don't have a, a time where I would wear long sleeve shirts all that often. So I don't need too many more. Although I do like that. But it's also a uh, like 40 bucks. It's a tough pill to swallow. Now, if you're coming on the Disney Cruise Line with a little princess, also a good place for you to shop for dresses and things like that, especially if you like can't get into Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique or don't want to spend the Bibbidi Bobbidi money, you can buy the princess dresses in here for like 60 bucks. And that'll be um, most of the most of the shopping. Oh, look at the Sum Sums or Sum Zooms. And Mickey is a nutcracker. Again, they're merchandise here. Uh, they don't have a lot of like duty-free liquor and duty-free merchandise like you see on many cruise ships. But if you're a Disney fan, you'll have plenty of places to spend your money here. There is a third shop located in the after hours uh, adult area, and that is Sea Treasures. Not, not too much down here, but more of a, a little more like polo dad shirt kind of things. It's also where they have a very limited selection of like uh, duty-free liquor as well. Uh, that's something you see a lot on other cruise lines. Is they have tons of duty-free liquor. Here, not nearly as much. Also, I don't think the prices are all that great. You know, the cruising bottles are might be cheaper at home. But uh, some of the higher value stuff, like if you're buying McAllen or Johnny Blue, you might save some bucks there. But this is Sea Treasures. Had to turn things back on in Sea Treasures because I thought these were props, and they are not. You can buy this cool, really, really like authentic old style, like a uh, carry-on bag. It does have a Disney Cruise Line emblem emblem on it. Uh, gonna cost you a pretty penny. This is like 159 bucks, but it, it's pretty awesome piece of luggage right there. And they have a uh, another Yeti. There is a very small art gallery here on the Disney Wonder. It's located right outside the D Lounge on deck four. And uh, it's some of the stuff you'll see from the parks, like your Thomas Kincaid stuff, but they do have a lot of like Disney Cruise Line, even Disney Wonder specific pieces of art. Um, they are definitely a little on the pricey side, like this sign pretty cool. But is it $545 cool? I don't know. Uh, pin set as well. Let's see, we got some more art over here. Nautical themed character stuff. I do like that, Lilo and Stitch like on the pool deck, very cute. Captain Mickey. I do like that showing off like the whole Disney fleet. Well, it would be weird to buy it now when they're they're building three more ships. And just some cool, cool artwork kind of stuff. I like the Castaway K one. Mm -hmm. So this is really cool. After Pirate Night we got back, and not only is there a towel animal of an elephant wearing my sunglasses, but we also got some chocolate gold doubloons. Time to talk about Cabanas, which is the ship's buffet. <coughs> oh man, tough to wake it up this morning. To show you what a uh, breakfast looks like here on board, got scrambled eggs hey, with salmon and some kind of cheese I've never heard of. Regular scrambled eggs. You've got grits, cream of wheat, and white rice. Moving along, you got some oatmeal, brown sugar, cinnamon powder. Oh, and that's different. Ginger marinated grilled tofu. Tofu. Crazy. Loud noises. Bok choy. Uh, garlic fried rice. 
chicken kongi, a whole bunch of toppings. And the, the face good. It's definitely one of the areas of the ship you feel like, oh, this is definitely an older, smaller ship. As there's, there's not a ton of seating over here, feels a little bit more cramped. Uh, food's been very good though. That welcome aboard buffet was amazing. Got some breakfast potatoes, hash browns, an array of fruits if you want to be healthy. And uh, a decent buffet. Moving slow. I will say one thing that's weird about the buffet, it's not a buffet at dinner time, it becomes like an anytime dining kind of restaurant. So if like you have kids that are throwing a tantrum or it just doesn't fit in with your schedule to go to your, your assigned dining time, which I recommend you do because that's amazing, um, you can come up here. All right, what is next? We got some uh, spinach, tomatoes, and mushrooms. <coughs> Kind of more weird breakfast items as well. Let's see over there, you got some. Looks like it's kind of like a make your own eggs Benedict style thing. Hard boiled eggs, baked beans, corned beef hash, hollandaise sauce. I'll turn the camera back on in a moment. All right, now we get to the good stuff: bacon, 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 bacon. Sausages, we got blueberry pancakes, normal pancakes, and of course the Mickey waffles, French toast as well. You gotta get a Mickey waffle on this trip, right? <clears throat> then to make your already unhealthy breakfast items even more unhealthy, they got an awesome topping bar with cream and fruits and chocolate syrup. Ah, oh, that looks fantastic. Some of the buffet repeats itself, so you got more uh, more Mickey waffles. You got some uh, different, you got quiche. That's interesting. Biscuits and gravy, croissants, warm maple syrup. Here's some uh, good looking uh, pastry kind of treats. More croissants. Um, your juices and stuff like that is all included. You can get them over here as well as your coffees. And then over here, I think it's make your own omelets. So they hide that in the back. Look at that. All right, that's what uh, Faye looks like here at Cabanas for uh, breakfast time. Last but not least, going to show off this long trippy hallway and show off our cabin, which we had 2578 in an uh, ocean view cabin. And man, th this is a huge, huge cabin for a cruise ship. Uh, going to show you around here. First of all, the important stuff, one, we got a towel animal like Brontosaurus with your nightly chocolate treats, which is fantastic. And um, the bed's big. It's a big bed, it's super comfy bed. And a lot of cruise ships, it's like two beds they just put next to each other, a little bit of foam in there. This one is not like that. It's one big, beautiful, wonderful bed. You do have these uh, Disney kind of lamps here showing off where the various castle parks are around the world exception of Shanghai, which doesn't exist for this castle map, but uh, see, it's probably a number of years old. And you have a clock that you usually don't have in the cabin. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the stateroom cabins don't have a clock. This one does. Love the chocolate treats every night. Uh, moving along, first of all, you have like also the biggest uh, window I've seen on a cruise ship. It's done in circular, and it's, it's an awesome window. Gigantic, gives you great views. We got a big old couch, not the most comfortable of couches. Also, probably it folds out into a bed. Mm -hmm. so. Because it sleeps four people. Yeah. Not a ton of Disney artwork on board the uh, in the cabin area. You've got this one, which is very, very, very light Disney here. And then you've got a, a picture of Walt and Lillian over there. Uh, State Room TV, they do have a bunch of channels. There's like uh, probably about ten movie channels. Mm -hmm. Some that just loop Disney movies over and over and over again. Uh, so there was like a, a, a classic animation channel a newer animation channel, a Pixar channel, a Marvel channel, a live action films channel, and then uh, a, a number of other channels that would just play like uh, pretty new movies, so uh, things that came out like just recently came out on DVD or Blu-ray. Um, one other thing that you got a, a ton of cabinets, storage space on the uh, in the cabin area. One thing I love is that the uh, the housekeepers they'll like tidy up their cords for you and put these little Velcro things on them to uh, keep things tidy up. I think that's really, really fantastic. Let's see, other stuff in the cabin. Again, a lot more storage over here. 
Uh, you got some big cabinets that are pretty nice. So that and those light up when you open them. Uh, for Pirate Night, everybody gets bandanas that are the are delivered to your stateroom, so those are what those look like. Uh, so that's fun. The bathroom, the bathroom's interesting because it's like uh, two split bathrooms. So in bathroom one here, you have a, a shower and a sink. And then in bathroom two, you have a, uh, a sink and a toilet. Also, I want to remind you guys to wear sunblock as uh, you see my face looks, you know, a little sunburny. Let me take off my hat. It's not, it's not a good look for me. Okay. Not good. There we go. Get that, yeah. Not not good. Put the hat back on there. Alrighty, so that'll do it for our uh, our time. We're here on the Disney Wonder cruise ship. We are here for three nights. Um, Molly, what were your favorite parts? The entertainment. All the shows were amazing. Yeah, the theater shows were, were fantastic. I, I love the rotational dining they do here on Disney Cruise. Mm -hmm. Where um, your waiters are amazing. That those are some of the best service team members I've seen on the ship. They follow you around every day, and I love that it's like it's sort of like dinner shows for two out of the three of them with the animators pal and the Tiana's place. Uh, Triton's is more of a, a traditional environment, so I like that. I really like the beer cup. I was so shocked how much draft beer was on this cruise ship. Uh, I mean, all throughout the ship between the restaurants and the the various bars. Probably like 30 different types of draft beer you could get, so I like that. There was always entertainment, something yeah. going on. Uh, let's see, uh, any things that I, you thought were not as great? I, I know for me, uh, I didn't really like their cocktails. Um, I, I, I'm a guy that likes to drink a lot, and I know my fair share about bartending and that kind of thing. And their, their, their pours on their drinks were not very good, like uh, as far as like counting liquor-wise. I, I didn't care for that, and they didn't have a lot of innovative or interesting cocktails. I know it's it's not a big drinking cruise ship, so that, that probably goes hand in hand. But uh, from a guy that, that you know loves the, the drinking element of cruise, their their cocktail game was not great. Lacking of characters. It was all yeah. The ones. Um, uh, like on today a, there was a lot, but on day one and two, all it was was Mickey, Minnie, and Goofy. Yeah, like uh, on day two, I saw on the sea day, I would expect like characters to be everywhere and meet tons of characters, different characters, and uh, there was very, very few characters, and I was disappointed by that. And the thing was that bummed me out was like the kids club got some of the cooler characters. Like we walked by the kids club and Spider Man's there playing with the kids. I'm not a child, so at no point in the cruise could I meet Spider Man, and that made me sad. Hmm. So they're like uh, as an adult, like you couldn't meet any Marvel characters. There were no Star Wars characters, so that that kind of bummed me out there. And also just a limited selection of characters. Alrighty, so uh, I think that'll pretty much do it for... Uh, uh, the, the cruise was very nice. Uh, the Castaway K private island is amazing. Really like that. I will say, uh, you know, Disney Cruise Line, one thing about it is, like, the price point is very, very high. Uh, you normally, a Disney Cruise will come in around to around two, three, four times as much as a, a Carnival or a Royal Caribbean cruise. And... I, I don't think it's worth it for that much more money than their competition. Like, I don't think the... It, it, Disney and Bifar are my favorite cruise line, but I don't think they're my favorite cruise line by three or four times. Like, it's not like in the theme park world where, yeah, Disney World's expensive, but Universal is almost as expensive. Here, it, it's like if, if Disney was five times the price of Universal. So I, I don't think the, the, the value for the dollar is there unless you have, like, small kids yeah. that really want to go on a cruise... Um, yeah, if you have kids, Disney. It, it by makes far sense. Makes sense. If you have small kids and you're loaded. Oh well, yeah. Um, so the, the price point kind of thing there is, uh, you know, it's something that sticks in your head. Mm -hmm. So you know, obviously, if you're watching this video, you're either thinking about booking the Disney Wonder, or you have booked the Disney Wonder, or you're one of our wonderful subscribers. Please, please click the subscribe button, get more videos, all sorts of places. And I want to thank you guys because uh, if you guys didn't watch videos like this, we would not be on this cruise ship right now. And uh, thank you very much from the, uh, the Disney Wonder and Pillow Brontosaurus here. We are signing off.